Okay, stop it, stop it. You move, I'll shoot you. You move, I shoot you. Huh? Yeah, you don't even have a drill gun. Oh, 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 okay. You want to test? You want to test me, huh? Yeah? You're, you're going around looking at Siva. Um, everybody should be in lockdown. Oh, you move around. You're taking this. I want to move around too. If you follow me, I'll shoot you. Huh? You move. Yeah, go, man. Don't look back. Don't look back. Yeah! Oh, <laughs> You know, there was once um project uh, in a couple of years ago, let's say eight years, it was called Mass One. What it was about was that um, they are providing you a one-way journey to planet Mars. It's real. Yeah, check it out. Mass One. And um, when you go there, you're not coming back. So they are looking for volunteers around the world to take there. So I applied. And I asked them that if they have a free Wi-Fi in mass and they and um, I was like, okay, I won't go again. Um, that's a ridiculous reason not to go to mass, but um, because I have been applying at one point. I said, okay, this is going to be a bad idea, so I have to pull out. And they asked me why, and I, and I give them that reason. And today they called me back and. <laughs> And they were like, um, um, we still don't have a free Wi-Fi in mass, but you know what else we don't have? COVID-19. <laughs> okay, that even be. So uh, what you first saw um, at the intro is something that we are going to create. And I think it's uh, to be more interesting if we uh, have a specific content that we are going to weird our new information around. Um, we have not touched some things. Um, we have not touched how to use Chroma and um, how to fast forward and do some slow motions. And also, what else? Then I brought in the idea of W Ganga. Ah. <laughs> How is that pronounced? So I hope, um, oh, let's get to it. Who else noticed that Wi-Fi works better in the evening and in the daylight? It's weird. Check it out. Wi-Fi. Better. Evening. Awesome. Okay, but before we move on, I'm going to show you um, the raw file. I mean, the footage that was recorded before the editing of um, this stuff that you saw, okay, that was some um, double ganga steal your bike. Now, I think the idea came from Amira. Hey, Amira, you are awesome. I, I like the idea. The idea was not uh, was not a bad one. So it's uh, I actually threw it out that I need an idea for double ganga, a duplication of yourself within the same thing and um, a lot of people came up with stuff and I think I like Amira. So Amira just said steal your bike so I decided to steal my bike and um, I think the acting was right and don't forget that if you want to do something like this you have in your mind exactly what you want to achieve okay so you you have a script for it you might even draw a storyboard and um, there is a medium close-up shot uh, at a point that those ones are recorded separately. In fact, not immediately. So we are bringing everything back together in the software. That's what we are going to do. And um, what else? Then I got the um, Mortal Kombat logo that is breaking uh, from the internet. Uh, I wanted to get the sound. Fatality or brutality, but I wasn't able to get that. Uh, I don't have time for that. And um, that fireball, there are two things about it. It's an animated fireball also, which we I got from internet. So um, well, I'm going to show you how it's. I made it a little bit realistic in Premiere, so that when the fireball is being thrown, it looks a lot, a little bit real. So, 
that's what we'll be facing today and uh, there you go now they are there okay that's I'm just zooming so that I can see everything at a glance then um, play this up to when I left my camera that's me placing my camera at the point another thing you need to know about this is that um, you need a tripod for this and your camera has to be very very stable and the reason for that you will see now this is me leaving the okay my camera somewhere this is me coming in from that angle and uh, riding my bike away so the whole scene is supposed to start from when I came in with my bike okay now this starts from around this place I just zoom in back uh, okay let me take it back okay my razor tool this is the razor tool here but if you press C it's a shortcut to razor so I click my on my razor tool just to split that part away and I'm going to keep cut that part away and uh, delete it's gone and um, move this back in and uh, let's see I'm just doing this pitch preview here I'm zooming out so that you can see what I'm doing and now my idea is that everything the blue guy is going to do in a scene is going to be acted at one um, one breath and um, this is the part is going to throw the fireball then you have to act as if it's throwing the real fireball and then yeah and yeah right so then that's the end of this scene for the blue guy and the green guy is going to start acting so since uh, the green guy has been talking before he showed up in this scene. Hey. Hey, stop here. Stop, stop, stop If you move, I'll shoot you. If you move, I shoot you. So I'm going to leave a part where the space where he can talk. So this part here is just useless. So I'm gonna cut this part out. Okay, so the first thing you if you want to fast forward a track if you want to fast forward your elements audio or video you can press R on your keyboard and uh, it's going to come up with this too and if you come to your edge the edge of your um, of your element on the timeline then you can move it like this now I want to move this so fast so that you can see the difference this um now you, you notice this uh, number it's saying 140 so if I move it even further this is 181 so that is the speed of the video now so you can see it's more okay, let me increase this I want it to be okay. So this is the second way is to right click on the video and um, go for speed duration. Then uh, type how fast you want it to be. So originally every video comes in hundred uh, in hundred percent. But uh, this is 382%. So I'm going to throw this back at 200. So you will see reverse speed. So the reverse speed is how you can make your video work backward. Yes. So you might not only speed up your video. You might still leave it at 100. But you want everything to work backward. If you click on reverse speed. Everything is going to work backward, and that's cool. And um, 
Now, if I come, oh, where's my bin here? It's lost. You see, now, sometimes some things might be missing on your interface. For example, I just discovered my bin is missing here. You can find it there. That's where I put all the stuff that we are going to need in this tutorial. But there are no more here. So, how do you get them back? You go to Windows and go to Workspace. Then, um, you can reset to save layout. That's one way to do it. Or you can look for what you are looking for. You know the name of what you are looking for. And what I'm looking for is program. Okay, projects. Duplo. And uh, it's going to return it back. So that is how you find things. So you might just use either of the settings to get your... Um, interface back at how you want it and i have uh if you notice that the sound the conversation between the two guy the green and the blue guy on the scene it was recorded differently so this is the recording which i made differently okay here yeah, you seeing that so if i bring that in Apparently, it will be longer because uh, we just shot in the two videos. Another way to make your clip faster is to by pressing R on your keyboard, and you will see this uh, amazing tool. And um, by dragging your video out like this, now this used to be 200%, now it's 32%. Now you see. video now you might need that in any of your projects so now I'm going to move this conversation back then I'm going to have the movie sound in okay so this is the movie sound and let's listen to the movies and feel it what we are going to do is that we are going to split the scene of the blue guy like this, just like are you looking at the arrow, uh, the mouse pointer. So I'm going to place the um, the blue guy, put it at this side, and put the green guy, put it at this side. So the action now we are going to match them together and we make it into a conversation. So now this is the blue guy action. Action. So now I am going to move this because we are going to place the two videos um, they are going to play simultaneously so now I said we are going to split the screen into two so that the two actors can interact in the same thing now when this the blue guy comes in I can't split the screen the screen now because um, the green guy is not in I will let the blue guy complete his mission and move to the side of the screen. And um, now the interaction of the blue guy on the scene is not more than this place. Okay? So now I'm going to cut that part out when he was the only one in the scene. So we don't need to split that into two. I mean, we don't need to share the screen. Okay? I am going to cut from here. So from here, I'm going to share the screen so that the green guy can add this other part. Okay, so that's the play. Okay, so now the tools that we are going to use here is called crop. I'm going to my effects. I type crop. Now crop is going to come out on that transform here. Then I'm going to drag crop on this part of the video. Now, if I, when crop is there, nothing will happen because we have not adjusted crop. So I go to my effect control here, then I scroll down. Now you are going to see crop, and these are the parameters. So we are dragging the left side. Okay, so it's cropping the left side, and it's cropping to this part. So just like I mentioned. So this is the part where the blue guy is going to interact with. Now, this clip is for the green guy. So, the green guy is going to start acting from here. Oh. So, 
I think you just have it like that. Now, I think you understand what's going on. The green guy starts, starts from here and is coming in. So now we split the video into two and the conversation, conversation starts. The green guy, I'm just um, scrolling through now so that you can see. Now, there's a side where the blue guy was telling the green guy, oh, you don't even have a real gun. So, how do we bring that in? Um, I am going to just um, put the two uh, conversation of the medium close-up shots in here. So, I have to be careful because the actions are almost... This is where he was pointing the hand. So I am going to start from when he's about starting. Then I'm going to cut that space. Uh, I am also going to cut the green guy part. Then I'm going to move all the clips backward. So to create space for the new shots. I'm cutting this part out. That is the part that we need. I delete this part off. And I'm bringing it in. The green guy will be telling the blue guy that, oh, you want to try me? You want to try me? So and, um, I want to use this part. And uh, I can move my cursor down here. And that's all the part that I want to use. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned this before. And this is another way of editing your video before you bring them to the timeline. Now, this is a long uh, trial of the medium close-up shots. It's long, but this part is the part that I need. So if you cut in here, if you mark in and mark out the video, it is going to take that only space that you mark in and mark out. And when you drag from this part, it's going to drag the audio and the video. When you drag from this part, it's going to drag only the video. And when you drag from this part, it's going to drag only the audio. So have that in mind. But I only need the video. I don't need the audio because we will be getting the audio from somewhere else. Now, what we need to look at now is uh, how to shoot the fireball. And the fireball is here. It's already downloaded. I grab my fireball and bring it in inside. Yeah. All right. So when I was downloading the fireball, it comes with this black background. Now there's one other thing that we are going to look at here. If the background is black and the foreground is distinct, um, Adobe Premiere allow you to remove the black background. Very easy. Now if I click on this fireball GIF here and go to my first control, all I need to do is find opacity. The opacity is transparency. Now, the opacity is on blend mode, uh, as a blend mode, and blend mode is on normal. So I'll find my screen. There's a screen here, and it's going to remove the black background. That there you have it. But I don't want to do it this way because uh, there's a little bit of complication here. Now, if I remove the black background here, I'm not going to have a ability to add the glow to it. Then if you look at the original, you are going to find that there is a glow around the fireball here. So now, what I'm going to do to solve that problem is that I'm going to create a black background that is, uh, that is going to be bigger. So um, the shortest way to do that is to right click, go to new items and find the black video. And uh, click OK. Then um, I'm going to drag that under my fireball, uh, let it fill up the space so that you can only see the, black, uh, the fireball at the center and the black background. So the next thing for me now, this is another trick. I am going to merge the two elements together and make them another sub sequence. Now, if you right click on it, you will find next sequence. If you next the sequence, you are going to, it's going to 
tell you if you want to change the name. I'm going to leave the name just by nested sequence one and okay. So now they have become to uh, just one on my timeline. And you can do this for a lot of things. You can merge a lot of things together on your timeline and put them in another timeline so that they can work on another timeline. I don't know if you get my drift. Now let's go back to opacity here and change it from normal to screen. And uh, now we have a fireball at the center just there and you know, you look at this bunny. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to fit it in the hand of the blue guy and let it shoot. So I'm going to move back a little. Uh, look at how when he's standing and by this part the I want my fireball to start moving. So let's move the fireball back. Okay. And um, uh, let's start working on the fireball. So now we want to animate the fireball. Now, in the concept of animation, we call it keyframing. Keyframing is an essential part of animation. If you don't know how to keyframe, then you can be an animator. Now, uh, uh, it's it's almost impossible to, you know, look at the old animations, the cartoons that you see back in the days, and see that they use that concept to make what we have, what we are watching, because every step, every movement is being monitored by keyframing. Okay, so. Uh, um, I think that's one of those things that frustrated my hood and 2D animations back then. And I mean, back then I was trying to make the black theory, you know, move around. And um, it was a very terrible uh, outcome. But I, I'm kind of proud of it. Black theory. <laughs> very interesting. So, the adventure of black theory, that's what we call it then. So now, let's learn how keyframing works. But before then, I want to set my, um, I'm making this bigger so that I can get to work on it. Uh -huh. And um, um, now, you remember our motion, position and scaling, I can move left and right. I move my fireball left and move it up, okay. Then I scale it to be small, right? I'm going to move it at the center of my hand. Okay. Now, this is the beginning of the fireball here. So let's move out. If I move in, now this is the beginning of the fireball. And my hand is shaking. So we are going to collect all that parts in our animation because the fireball is just going to follow the path where my hand to is following. So, okay, it's okay this way. Now, what we are going to do, what we call animation, is keyframing. And how do you keyframe? Anytime you see this logo around here, something that we have here, on any software, it means that what you are dealing with can be animated. And it's a good news. For you so that means that you can make your visuals even more interesting so i'm going to click on position and it's going to keyframe it uh, you can see a keyframe here this is the representation of keyframe now is there you can move it around so what's keyframe telling you keyframe is just telling you that at this particular point in time in your uh, visual you want what you are animating to be exactly at that point. That's key frame. That means you key the frame, you, 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 you lock it down to that part. So that's how it's going to be. Now, if you move ahead in your timeline, which you have this uh, small timeline here, and uh, if you move ahead, then you can change how things look. Now, it's like this here now. Okay. Now I'm going back to my scale, which is 17. Then I'm going to keyframe, giving it a keyframe also. If 
if I move ahead the space now as my hand is moving and my fireball is just staying there looking at us I am going to move my uh, fireball back and uh, let it be up just to station it all over again now I have moved up in my timeline then I'm giving it another keyframe. Now I'm telling the computer that I have changed the, the parameter. Now the parameter will change at this level is position and the scale is still there. So I can make the fireball even bigger at this point. So now at point A, it is smaller, it is 17, and at point B, it is 28. So now that is what animation is. So that is just the concept of animation. If you are able to understand that, then you are good to go in your animation. But don't forget, keyframe is what it is. You first activate your animation by clicking on the button. And when you click on the button, it's going to create a keyframe here, telling you at this point on your timeline, this is the situation. And if you move ahead in your timeline, if you change the situation, it's going to come from point A to point B, just that you've done. And you can see what's going on over here, that our fireball became bigger and moved backwards in the end. Now, I, I am seeing what's going on here. So, if I move back, I can still adjust this. I can adjust this to come back with my hand. Because it's going to move very fast now my last position and my next position on my timeline is going to be very small also and I'm going to let this go out Fireball is here, and Fireball is supposed to go and meet the person that it has been sent to. So now, when it gets to this part, uh, let me use this. When it gets to this part, I am going to end the Fireball here on my timeline so that it goes out. Okay, so now that's more like it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to add the glow effect to it so that our fireball can glow. And um, the effect that we are going to use for that is called the lens flare. Lens flare. L E N S. Lens. Now, a lot of lens flare here. Yeah. Oh, just type lens. I'm going to add the flare. Okay. So, there's this is, um, lens flare here. So, I'm adding my lens flare on this element here and immediately you will see the okay now I want to make this bigger so that I can see what I'm doing. Okay. Right. Now you think I can see this. I think you can see this. Now the lens and the flare is there. It's not really on top of my fireball. So if I go down in my effect control, I'm going to find the parameter for lens flare, and this is the positioning of the lens flare. So I am coming this way and I, I will adjust it to be in the same. Okay, that is perfect. Now I'm having a glowing lens flare a fireball. I have a glowing fireball. What else can we use on this to make it even more realistic? Uh, what I used there 
is a directional blur okay directional blur so if i type my blur here look for directional blur and have my directional blur here and i put it on this then um the directional blur parameter is here and it's on zero zero okay it's better that way oh. so when the movement starts when the shot is being fired I am going to cut this part out and it is only this part that I want the directional blow to act on so that's why I have to cut it out of this because um, you don't need it there I'm changing the direction to 90 degrees and uh, the blow to come like that so now see this is how directional blow works yes so the reason we are able to do that is because um, this anything we put on this nested sequence is going to act on every element that is on the other side of the sequence if I double click on this sequence you are going to see the element that are there you see the black video and the fireball okay the black video and the fireball so over here you are going to see what the element that will put there to act on it so now i think that is the basics of what we wanted to learn today now another thing you discover on this um on the original video is um the um uh, the color is sharper the color is sharper you have a very vibrant color on that one and this one is giving us a dark color so in our next class we'll be looking at your simple color grading that you can do in your premiere to make your work better and also we'll be looking at how you can use your elements like um uh, how you can use chroma to do something that we just done today because one thing you notice about um, this is that um, the two actors they cannot cross their path you know the green and the blue they can come into the same scene because that is just impossible and um, if you look at this video we just created and um, the original one that has been edited you will notice the sky now I want you to look at the sky there is a part in this the one that we just created in the sky where the crop that we've done is showing you know the sky at point a when i'm recording for the blue guy and at point b when i'm recording for the green guy is different every other thing in the scene is perfect but that sky is different but um, the good thing about premiere is that beyond the cropping we can actually crop somebody out by using the mask so the mask is one other thing we'll talk about in our next class the mask and the color grading so don't forget to subscribe and join us in the next class i hope you enjoy this if you have any question if there is anything you think we're supposed to talk more on on our next class please let's discuss that in the comment section um a mushroom by the way bye